What's up everybody? This weekend I am working on plumbing my water tanks in and I figured I'd just make a short video about how I'm plumbing my float valve in to the top of the tanks right up there at those top bulkheads. The reason I want to make a video about it is not because this is like a hard process. It's mainly because I got on YouTube and I looked for it and I couldn't find somebody making a video about it. So, you know, maybe it's self-explanatory enough for some people, but I mean, I pretty much designed these systems <laughs> for a living and I still was like kind of curious about, okay, when it actually comes down to building it yourself, like what are the right steps? So that's why I want to make the video. I would say, 90% of tank installations for either fire suppression or water systems, you're going to want to put a float valve in to control the water coming in. That way you can have a constant source of water. And um, for example, this is the float valve that I'm going to be using for now at least. It's called a Hudson. And you know, it sits in the tank like this at the top of the tank, and when the water hits this float at the bottom, it seals it. So, way back there is my well house, and it's a solar pump. So, whenever that solar panel has light on it, I'm getting water pumped. And I'm going to have these tanks hooked up to that, so I want this float valve to be controlling when the water goes into the tank so that I'm not just pumping a bunch of water everywhere unnecessarily. So yeah, that's kind of the, the basics. Yeah, we'll jump into it. I'll explain a little bit about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and then we'll do it. So this right here is a bulkhead fitting and that is what we have at the top of each one of those tanks up there. Now, a bulkhead fitting is basically just a fancy way of saying these two pieces of plastic are going to smush the wall of the tank together and make a watertight seal. So, if you can think about it, like, you'd drill a hole in the tank that big, and then this nut would kind of, like I said, smash the wall of the tank together in between this piece and this piece. The, the, where, where you're actually plumbing into this, though, are these inner threads. And these inner threads are National Pipe Thread, NPT, and they're threaded from both sides. So you'll have a pipe, in this case, I guess this would be the outside of the tank here, and this would be the inside. So you would thread your source in through that side, and then you would thread your float in through the other side. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Uh, I believe this is a, actually a one and a half inch bulkhead. We're gonna be plumbing everything with two inch there. So I've got my float here. We've got an adapter for poly pipe because that's what I'm gonna be using to actually get the water to the tank. I've got a beverage. I've got some tape, some Teflon tape. And uh, yeah, a couple other odds and ends and I'll show you how it all goes together. All right, here are our two pieces that we've made up to get this float valve plumbed. This one's going to be on the inside of the tank, or the inside of the bulkhead, and this one's going to be on the outside. And of course, the float is going to go on there at some point, but it's not going to go on yet, because if I had screwed the float onto here, you know, I might have not had enough clearance to actually get the... Um, this little piece of 80 screwed in to this fitting. Now, if you are wondering why I'm mixing and matching Schedule 80 and Schedule 40, that's a wonderful question, and I actually do have a pretty good answer for it. In any outdoor applications, I always like to use Schedule 80 because it's got a UV inhibitor in it, so that's why it looks gray. This is a 2 inch to one half inch reducer, male to female, and that fitting cost me about $15. And I made it in Schedule 40 with two pieces for about $6. So the 80 is quite a bit more expensive than the 40, but it does better in sunlight. So 
anything below ground or in tanks or really anything that's going to be out of the sunlight is okay to use 40. It's even okay to use 40 if you paint it. You know, you just want to avoid that sun exposure over time and it getting brittle. So outside, inside, and then the reason I used 80 right here is that was a little nipple that I cut on the chop saw. And I believe nipples only come in schedule 80. So there you go. There are the pieces of the puzzle. Now let's go put them in the tank and hook it up and see if we can get some water flowing in there. The one last thing that I want to do before I put those fittings in the bulkhead up there is I want to flush out this poly hose. Make sure there's no ants nests or anything that's been sitting there over time. I just want to make sure it's nice and clean so that we don't immediately clog up our float valve. So I'm going to go do that right now. I'll stick the camera on the outlet here and you guys can see if anything funky comes out. I have to say it's not as bad as I thought. It is a little bit rusty looking. That's probably just because I haven't run my tanks in a while or run my pump in a while. I'll let that run for, I don't know, a few minutes. Let it clean out. And then, um, yeah, in the meantime, we can jump up to the top of the tank and start hooking those fittings up. All right, so we'll start with the top bulkhead fitting. And this one will be easy because we can get to it from the outside. The inside is gonna be a little more interesting because we gotta do it through this manway cover. So yeah, we'll tape this guy up and stick it right in there. simply goes in here and I think one turn is gonna be just fine so that's the outside done now let's take a look at the inside and there is the back side of the bulkhead I have to get to Again, I haven't put the float valve on here yet because I don't think there's clearance for me to do this with the float valve connected. So we'll clean this thread up, we'll tape it and just leave it. And then we'll clean this thread up and also tape it and thread this side in and then thread the float valve on the bottom. Okay, all taped up, good to go. extra sure I don't drop anything down in there because I do not want to get into this tank. So we got it hooked up, well, except for the poly on here, which we're going to do shortly, but that's what it looks like on the outside. That's what it looks like on the inside. Now I do want to say something about that Hudson valve. 
that's probably not going to be a permanent solution to me. And the reason is the Hudson float valves, just because of the way you have to plumb them and where the water level actually hits the float, I'm robbing myself out of about, I don't know, six inches of water at the top of the tank. So I do have another float valve on order. It's a brass one, just a typical, like a trough float valve with an arm and a ball. And that'll allow me to maximize the water level that I get in the tank. But for now, I'm gonna say that we are good. We're still flushing the line out here, but I'm gonna go ahead and shut that off. We will throw a little hose clamp on it, stick it on there, and then start pumping some water. See what it looks like. All right, so this guy gets crammed on here. This clamp just holds them on. Now again, this is all sort of temporary. I really just want to get water tank water into my tanks. All right, we're all plumbed in. We're all hooked up. The well is on. All I got to do now is go turn the spigot. So I'm gonna leave you guys here. The moment of truth will be with you guys. <laughs> This is essentially how this valve works, is once the water level comes up and the float gets hit and puts pressure on it, it seals it. And then when the water level drops, So this tank is getting water now. That's good. If you can hear, that tank is also getting water. And the reason that that's happening is because I actually have the inlet line for both tanks just on a T. So theoretically, how this would work is that the path of least resistance would be water fills those tanks first, the float valve seals, and then water starts filling this tank. But I guess the flow rate through the float valve right now into the lower tanks is low enough such that we're still getting water into the upper tanks. Now, if you're wondering, do you need two float valves? That's also a good question. And the answer is no, you only need one because, well, I guess it depends on what you're doing, but at least with my application, this tank is the one that the water is going to go into. And then these two bottom um, bulkheads, which I have shutoff valves on, I'm going to have these two tanks manifolded together. So technically, once I get those hooked up, these tanks should kind of act as one and raise and fall together. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful to somebody out there. I know I was looking for a video on it, so I figured I'd make one. But if you want to follow along with how I'm kind of tuning this water system up and setting it up, um, I mean, as you guys saw, I don't have the actual distribution hooked up on it, but eventually I'm going to have these manifolded together. I'm going to have a pump hookup, and then I'm going to do below ground through the entire property and have hydrants and places where I can get water anywhere on the property. So if you're interested in following along with that process, uh, subscribe to the channel, check it out. I'm trying to do lots of that type of stuff up here. So if that's what you're into, stay tuned and we'll catch you in the next video.